Yo, what's going on, everyone? It's Brian and Jim here with Drink Beer and Play a Game, and welcome to another episode of the Power Hour. Yes, hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 142. Thank you for joining us tonight. How you doing? Happy to have you joining us this evening. <laughs> kind of got sidetracked already. <laughs> 142 oh, episodes. One of these days, I'll get this right. But yes, thank you for joining us, and a big thank you and shout out to uh, Celia Schilling for coming on last week. Very cool to have someone on the other side of the whole game industry thing. So definitely interesting to hear her perspective with everything. And she was a fun time. Yeah, absolutely. And to double down, also thank you very much for sending us the code for Shovel Knight uh, Pocket Dungeon, uh -huh. which depending on when this video is released, you've probably seen that I released the review for that game the day before or the day after. It's You're either about to see it or you already saw it. It's a really fun little game, and I guess that would be a good jumping off point. Um, I couldn't talk too much about it, because I didn't get a chance to play it before we talked to Celia. But I know, Jim, this past week, my, a lot of my time has been spent playing that game. And as I cover in the review, um, you know me, I am not a big puzzle guy, but this game sucked me in. I had a lot of fun, and I've never seen a game combine, like, a roguelite with a dungeon crawler with a kind of bejeweled style puzzle game it's really like interesting and there's a lot to it and for the fact that it's only 20 bucks there's a whole lot there so pretty damn fun game as i said you'll see the rest of it in my review but that for sure took up the bulk of my time this past week and yeah. Yeah, I also did re I also downloaded GTA 5 for Xbox because I had it on PS4. I just haven't played my PS4 in a while and I got it on one of those crazy cheap like, you know, $10 sales. And yeah, I can really understand why that game is still getting like updates and releases. It's just you know, it's really 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 good and I know that's a super obvious shit to say. It's like someone discovering Skyrim for the first time. But, uh, yeah, those have been my two kind of go-tos for the past week. Um, except for, oh, shit, I did just beat, oh, speaking of another good game that I know you played and enjoyed, that uh, Bloodstained Curse of the Moon. Oh, you finally got around to that, huh? Yeah, so I played it before, like, and I think I only went through, like, one level, and I was kind of like, eh, Castlevania 3 clone, I don't really need to play this. And it's a surprisingly short game. I know there's multiple endings, but yeah, it, it is a cast. It never stops. It actually becomes more of a Castlevania 3 clone the longer you play. Oh, yeah. But it's really fun, and I love the soundtrack, and yeah, it's a pretty good game. May want to dip my toes into the rest of the series now. Oh, yeah. No, that was. A, I actually still need to get around to playing uh, the second one. So, yeah, but no. Is I there two my... or three of them out? Uh, there's two Castlevania clones and one Symphony of the Night clone. Hmm. Okay. So there's Curse of the Moon, which is the 8-bit style. Then there's Ritual of the Night, which is the uh, Simply of the Night version. And then mm. Curse of the Moon had a second one come out. Nice. And you beat Curse of the Moon, right? Yeah, I beat the first one. Um, even though I know you weren't the biggest fan of uh, Symphony of the Night, were you? I like it. I just hit that point where I got lost. And the same thing happened with Ritual of the Night. Where I hit a point where I got lost, I didn't know where the fuck to go, I tried to look <laughs> up a guide, but even looking through a guide, I like couldn't figure out what the hell to do, so I got frustrated and quit. So, whenever I go back to it, I gotta go back from, like, the beginning and just, yeah. like, go through it again. Because I know, it's what happens with all those fucking games. I'm either missing one stupid item that's in one stupid spot somewhere that I'm just mm -hmm. not realizing, or it's, like, there's, like, one block in the middle of a room with all the blocks look the same that I have to hit the one specific block to fucking get my way through, and I'm not figuring it out. Happens every time. By the way, I think we need to trademark or make a name for that, that symptom of playing a game, getting pretty far, stopping, coming back months later, and deciding I just need to restart because I have no idea. I know the old meme was, like, the thing from Lord of the Rings where Gandalf is like, I have no memory of this place. Like, when you boot up <laughs> yeah. a game. Um, but that really is, like... And I think a lot of gamers experience that. And I wonder how many try to, like, just continue where they were. They say, fuck it. Let me restart fresh. And then you end up probably doing the same thing. You stop again. And then you come back years later. Like, it's a vicious cycle. Yeah, I mean, I think I did that with, like, the original Mass Effect. And you know what? I did do that with the original Mass Effect. Because <laughs> I played it for, like, one or two hours. I got to get super far into it. 
but I was playing it back then on a 13-inch CRT. Mm. And this is back in the days when they started to not optimize games. Like, you could still play them through composite on a CRT, but the text was nigh unreadable, which was <laughs> not good with an RPG. So once I got my uh, Plasma, which I still have, I uh, finally went back to it and was able to get through it. So much, much better experience than that. <laughs> just, just a wee bit. Just a bit. <laughs> So what about you, Jambers? Have you uh, been able to play anything fun this past week? Link's a fucking awakening. Playing this shit out of there. God damn it. Still playing on the old Game of Watch. <laughs> I'm on the last... I just got to the last dungeon today. So I'm really enjoying it, but I also am so ready to be done with it at this point. How many hours do you think you put into it? That's a good question. I, I don't know if that little timer when you start up like uh, on the save screen is your time or like a percentage. I don't know. But... uh mm. Probably at least a good fucking, at least a good twelve to fifteen hours, at least probably, if not more, True. because uh, I am. I made a promise to myself with this that I would not, no matter how frustrated I get, I was not <laughs> going to go to a guide. So Ooh, okay, I, that's interesting. I've I I have not done it. I have not touched a single guide yet. I'm on the last level. I'm fucking. I can't wait to be done it. I'm sure it's gonna be a nightmare to get through. And it'll be the same thing in these goddamn dungeons that it is every time where I either don't realize I have to hit move the right block to the right spot or I completely miss, like, you know, a wall that I have to blow up with a bomb or something stupid. I need these goddamn puzzles. And so, like, there's a reason I can only play, like, a Zelda and, like, a Metroid once a year. Like, I need to flush my brain out and get, recharge yeah. after that, with all, after all this thinky think. But, no, I, it is a really well-made game, so... So I've never played Link's Awakening, but is it as cryptic as like the original Legend of Zelda? No, way less cryptic. So okay, like it's still pretty goddamn cryptic. Like especially like if you're a kid today who's never played like the old school games, you're gonna be like, "What the fuck do I do?" Because even yeah. me, there was a lot of times where like until I got into like the groove of the game for like the little things, like the little tells of what to look out for, mm -hmm. I was ripping my freaking hair out with this game. <laughs> so. <laughs> So let me ask you this: You don't care about story in game. There's like, not a lot of story to... in it, though. No, no, no. I'm saying though, you don't like to invest time into a game and care about character or story. But yet, for someone like you who doesn't have a lot of time to play games, you're willing to sacrifice what could have been hours of time just because you're not figuring it out in wanting to figure something. It's like different than saying like I'm not going to use a save state or something or a cheat because I want to beat it like through skill whereas this right. isn't really skill it's more like you just want to figure it out and i'm curious like why the distinction like why is that more important to you i don't know i don't have a good answer it just was it, i guess after the first couple things were like right away in the game i was like fuck it i need a guide but i was like no 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 it's too goddamn early so i guess <laughs> i just like kept telling myself no it's still too early no it's still too early and then i hit that like event horizon where i'm like well you've come this far without a guide you've come this far without a guide so it's kind of like okay that. Gotcha. I gotcha. kind of fell into it. Interesting. Whereas with, like, the original Legend of Zelda, oh, fuck. Like, <laughs> did not take long for me to get to a guide with that one, because that game is cryptic. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that game was designed to sell Nintendo powers. As we've said. Yeah. I, a lot of those Nintendo games. Yeah, a lot of those Nintendo games. And call it what you will, but, yeah, a kid today, if you gave it to him cold and said you can't use the internet, and no Nintendo Power. Good luck. Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah. So, no. It is. It's cryptic but fair. That's what I'll say about Link's Awakening. And, okay. like, that's always the one that people are either saying, like, their favorite 2D Zelda is either that or Link to the Past. And I've never put, like, significant time to Link to the Past either. So, that'll be my Zelda game next year. That's a Yeah. Now, that is a great game. And... It just feels so much bigger than all the other previous games and even Link's Awakening. So I haven't hit that point in that game where I was like, oh, I need a guide. Because I feel like you could just fuck around and do other stuff for a while before you like really start scratching your head and being like, I did everything. What the fuck? Right. Interesting. So what? how much did you pay for that game and watch? 50 or no, maybe 43 I think it was, like, on sale on, like, Black Friday. I thought you were going to wait till it's, like, dirt cheap. No, the Game & Watches never go down. Even the Mario one's still 50 bucks. I still don't understand. Like, knowing the fact, and I don't, I'm not saying this from a place where I know, 
I'm assuming you could probably download Link, Link's Awakening on Switch. Why um, wouldn't you just want to do that? It's not on Switch yet. But if it, if it was in all those games... I mean, I mean, I could have bought the remake, but then I'm, um, you know... I, apparently the remake's just, like, graphically updated, but it's mostly the same game from what I read. I could be wrong. <sighs> Damn it, you just like You just like your little gizmos. I like the Game Watch. It's cute. And then I get two more games I can easily play on the go. It's cute. <sighs> Damn it, Jim. So has that, has that been your only focus? Uh, and what do you call it? I posted about it, like, and my little pick-up-and-play game for the week was uh, Aqua Kitty. So, for those who don't know, it was, like, it was an indie hit back in, like, 2014. Nice little Defender clone. Fun little game. Nice little challenge to it. So, 25 levels, and then, then, you know, the God version on the Switch has more game modes, but I didn't dip my toes into them. Tell me you didn't pay more than a dollar for it. I, I think I paid, like, 250 It was on, like, sale. So Too much. Too much. Not too much. Quality <laughs> game. Quality title. Good use of $2.50. <laughs> um, so I take it then you still haven't downloaded Plague's Tale. No, or, I told you. I downloaded and have not played it yet. Or Alien Fire Squad. That only came out today on Game Pass, so I have to download oh, it. Oh, I thought it was last week. No. They announced oh, okay. that they were going to be having it come out because uh, I checked it. Okay. All right. So, yeah, maybe this week we'll be able to play it, Jim? Possibly. Yeah. I know we have well, some engagements Friday or Thursday. We have engagements but, on Thursday, so might be a little late, but we'll see. But yeah, we gotta get you playing that. Well, yeah, I mean we have to be cryptic about it. Uh, this week on Thursday, we're recording this on Tuesday the fourteenth. So on Thursday the sixteenth, we'll be making our return to the Thought Cops podcast. So make sure to look them up. You know, just search for Thought Cops, you'll be able to find them. So yeah, and don't they do they do that live on their Discord? They do it live on the Discord. So. If you want to, I mean, you have to, if you want to listen live and engage live in the chat, you have to be on their Patreon, but. Mm, okay. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, put, we'll put the links below that. Yeah, yeah. If you want to hop on and check them out, definitely give them some love. They're good guys and we've been on their podcast. They've been here. So yeah, it'll be a good time. Yep. Definitely. Oh, goddamn Aqua Kitty. <laughs> Fuck Jim. <laughs> shit talking a game you know nothing about. I'm not shit talking. It's just, I. Th- of all the games, like, man, I could be playing this. You just tell me a name, Aqua Kitty. Like, that that in and of itself, I go, <sighs> okay, really? Milk Defenders. Gotta defend your milk, Brack. God damn it. <laughs> oh, there's so much I'll say, but I won't. So, Jim, I just saw you take a sip of something in a fancy glass. What are you having tonight? Well, I am continuing my dip into the Harpoon and Dunkin' Donuts collaboration. This week's offering is the Harpoon Dunkin' Pumpkin. So, oh, okay, it's their pumpkin ale. Uh, 5.2% alcohol, blah, 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 all brewed with lactose, cinnamon, pumpkin puree, coffee, and other natural flavor. Hmm. So, once again, comes to us from the Harpoon Brewery out of Boston, Massachusetts, and apparently Windsor, Vermont. But, <laughs> yeah, you know what? It's got that pumpkin, you know, spice kind of smell to it. It kind of tastes like a pumpkin spice coffee, but mixed with beer. See, I'm shocked. Even I still have some pumpkin left, and I feel obligated just to finish it because I'm still writing up the massive amount of reviews. But I, I can save one of you, these for you. I was gonna say, aren't you tired of pumpkin stuff? No, because I didn't dip into it as hard as you did. Hmm. Gotcha. I only had a couple, so you're the one who had like three dozen. Yeah. So I am sticking local with Trogues and doing the Blizzard of Hops, which is their winter IPA, 6.4%, 80 IBUs with Centennial, Galaxy, Chinook, and El Dorado hops. Um, I think I told you this last time we did the podcast, but like I've been on a kick where because I've had so many pumpkin beers, heavier winter beers like stouts i was like i'm really just in the mood for like an ipa and when i went to the store i saw that trogues you just it's almost like once winter hits trogues is like a golden standard but troganators Mm. this mad up like you know it's just that's my go-to so yeah this is gonna be my ipa it's um surprisingly the color is actually pretty damn crystal clear that's way lighter than i was expecting yeah yeah it's really really light for an ipa and not much head to it it's pretty good i'm not gonna say it's top tier but it's not bad 
Yeah, I've had it before. It's good stuff. It's yeah. not it's not a go to from them, but it's good. Yeah. Um, Jim, speaking of top tier, <laughs> I uh, do you ever do you I forget do you watch TV before you go to sleep like in bed, or do you or are you just the kind that go right to bed or stick around on your phone? Uh, we pretty much just go right to bed. Like we'll watch TV in the living room, but then when it's bedtime, we'll just go up there. Okay. Like we have a TV in our bedroom, but we only like if we use it once a month that's like kind of uh that's a lot huh interesting we we get the most use out of it on like a saturday morning when the kid gets up but we don't feel like getting out of bed yet hmm. so one of us will go down and get her some cereal and milk and then just like she'll sit there and watch tv as we try to get a little more sleep so i have a, a habit of like i don't really watch that much tv at all um, I might rewatch movies here and there, or if there's a show Monica and I want to watch. But before bed, that is my only real TV time. And like usually, it's rewatching like old episodes of like It's Always Sunny, South Park, Simpsons, you know, whatever. It's like right. just shit to turn my brain off to. Um, but I was going through Netflix, and good old Team America: World Police. Ah, yes. And like. Dude, I can't. I can't tell you how long it's been since I've actually watched that. But how many times do you think we've watched that in college? Oh Christ, uh, dozens, dozens, and dozens. <laughs> and before college, like before, like back, late high school, or even before, like you know, I was. We were all living together in college. Like you, basically, essentially lived there. Yeah. Um, like even then, like that was one of those movies that I would have like in constant rotation on my DVD player at home. <laughs> it was like that Spinal Tap, one of my Rush DVDs, a couple other things. Like thank you for smoking, but yes, Team America was always on. Yeah, and easily probably one of the things we quoted the most between like that and Anchorman and a few other movies. But I feel like that the quotes lived on for quite a while. Oh yeah, that is one movie though I thought of and I said, you know. Uh, Trey and Matt made great South Park games. They should make a Team America Role Please game. <laughs> oh, that would be fucking funny. Like, I'm thinking of it like Puppeteer. You did it with puppets there. You do it with Team America. <laughs> Trey, get a hold of friggin' uh, get a hold of Sega. Make it there happen. There you go. <laughs> How awesome would that be? <laughs> oh, God, I'd be all over that. <laughs> I don't even know the right genre. If it is just a running gun like with cool cutscenes, or if you do try i mean okay. you'd have to have the vehicle missions and all that shit too yeah yeah it would be all <laughs> uh, getting all your briefings from intelligence yep please gary i am not trying to suck your cock or, or <laughs> what's he say he's like i am not here to like waste your time and oh, i'm not here to fuck your long. mouth like something to that effect <laughs> yeah i can't remember yeah it's a nice limo isn't it now suck my <laughs> yeah i do that movie though i that that brought back so many memories i was like oh god damn i missed that movie so right in the nostalgia yep <laughs> so all right chambers before we hop into our patreon uh there's two little things we should hit up hit on which yep. is first uh thank you so much to colin weising 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 yeah thank Sorry, you Colin, don't know how to say it yeah thank you for joining our patreon Truly appreciate it. New two dollar tier. So make sure get your questions in if you haven't already. Each and every Power Hour podcast, we truly appreciate the support and appreciate you joining us. But uh, speaking of supporters, um, one of the questions last week we didn't get into too much detail, so we wanted to retouch on it. So Jim, why don't you set the tone? Yep, good old our buddy Phony Montana. So he wasn't quite uh, what do you call it? He wasn't quite satisfied with our answer last week. So. He said, so his question was basically, what are our thoughts on weed? So mm -hmm. his, his comment on that episode was, what kind of PC-ass answer was that? I wasn't referring to the legality aspect, but wanted to know your personal feelings on weed and a rebuttal to drinking versus weed in the context of being productive the following day, consuming after. Hmm. So I've said many times, I can only speak to it as interacting with people because I've never actually smoked weed. Um my interactions with people it's weird weed people are so much more annoying because they resort to themselves or, or you know they they're like vegans they won't stop telling you that they are a weed person and they're really annoying about it um and when they're high they're they're when you're high versus drunk drunk people it really depends on the person like if it's jim 
He's slobbingly falling down or way too loud yelling things he shouldn't. So it's like a weird mixture. Whereas people that are high, it's they're generally just lower energy. I've never seen a higher energy high person. Let's put it that way. Um, so it's like in the moment at their extremes, it's probably easier to deal with someone who's high, but you're not going to do a whole bunch of fun shit with a high person or a drunk person. You can convince them to do stupid shit and probably have more of a fun night. And then, as I said, you know, the person that gets high too much is usually way more annoying when they're not high because that's all they want to fucking talk about. Um, but having never done it, I guess, Jim, wasn't one of your cures for hangovers getting high? Oh, it's the best fucking cure for hangovers. <laughs> that's the best cure is just fucking smoking up. It makes a, it, I've had some of the worst hangers go, hangovers go away right away after that. And Bri has a little nope, I, I, I knocked there. I knocked out my headset. Sorry, I, I didn't hear you. But no, I mean, I remember you telling me that all the time. And here's my question. Wait, it's not even a question because I know. There is no such thing as like getting so high the next day you feel it, right? It's like pretty much out of your system. Yeah, I've never, I mean, unless it's like winds up being laced with something, I guess. Like I've never had an experience where like I wake up and like I still feel high the next day, shit like that. Like, you know, you can wake up and feel groggy and stuff like that. But, man, I'll, I'll tell you this. Uh, it After, because back in college, I used to be a big fucking pothead. <laughs> and, like, when I, I stopped for work. And when I stopped for work, it took me so long to get back into any kind of sleep schedule without it. Mm. Like, it was, it was the worst sleep in the world without it until, like, I finally, I guess, got back to a sense of normal. Also started drinking more again at that point. So. <laughs> but, now, uh... <sighs> So, but yeah, clear- to answer like Phony's question, man, I fucking loved weed. I goddamn loved it. It was it, like, cause it's just, it's basically what he says. Like you and kind of like what you touched on. You can smoke up, sit back, relax, nice little feeling over you and mixing weed with beer, like a nice little mixture of both. Even better. It's better than being mm. drunk alone. It's better than being high alone. That's just like a perfect level of like fun, but also like, like, you know, goofy that you get when you're high, that kind of feeling. So, like, that's the thing I love the most. But, um... So, were you more of a, you know, uh, from people I know, there's either the one that, the one that giggles all the time when they're high. There's the ones that, you know, get really hungry. The ones that get super lethargic. And I, I have known some people who become ultra paranoid, like, when they're high. Which one are you more consistently? I've been all the above. The least, the least one that I ever got was paranoid. Like I luckily never got the paranoia too bad, unless it was in like one or two situations. Like one time I got pulled over when I was high, and I was like, "Up oh, here it is, <laughs> here it comes." But luckily, like nothing came from it. But uh, what do you call it? Um, for the most, I mean, hungry. Obviously, I'm hungry regardless. It just amplifies it. G- giddy. I never would be the kind who would just sit there and giggle. For like no reason, <laughs> exactly. But if something tickled me, like it would be, it could be a real hard laugh for a while, like unnecessarily long. And um, yeah, I mean, it's just like it's just chill. Like it, it's like you're not going to go out and do a lot. Like I was very much like, especially when my group of friends were on a real stoner phase. It's like, do you want to go do anything? No, just sit in, smoke up, and play Guitar Hero for seven hours. All right, cool. <laughs> so. So, yeah, I said, I've said many times, like, I'm cool with, like, I'd probably be willing to do edibles and shit. Like, the the smoking part, I've never, like, other than the occasional cigar, I've never even smoked. Like, I just, growing up with parents that smoke like chimneys, it turned me off to any type of smoke. So, that is something that probably won't change for me. But, like, edibles, I don't care. Like, yeah, if it mellows you out, like, I know so many people who do that. Um, I guess my question is, you said it does get you hungry. Um... What's worse, you know, because you and I have talked, when you get drunk, the need, the need to want to eat greasy, terrible food, mm-hmm. when you're high, is it that same, or are you just generally hungry for, like, everything? You know, I think the hungry thing with being high is, over, or is overblown. I think it's just more of a meme, mm. because, like, I, maybe it's just me, because I'm a fatso in general, but, <laughs> like, when I get really drunk, I get really hungry, and I'm a bombas pit. When I get high, I don't, like, get hungry, but when I start eating... Like it's just not stop. So you just, it just you just don't get full. Yeah, the off switch does not work at that point. Mm. So, 
So with beer, what's funny is, and I just actually heard something, like there was a study done. You know how like the idea is people think you get stupid when you get drunk? And they actually prove that's not that's not the case. You're actually very in, you're, you re retain your intelligence because if you ask a drunk, like if they're doing something stupid, they can elaborate on the risks of the situation, but their their inhibitions are lower, so they're willing. Right, they just to don't just, care. They yeah. just don't care about this stuff. Um, and it's funny, like having done this site, like playing video games. At, <laughs> Not that I'm saying this is a good thing, but kind of like drunk driving, you are almost hyper-focused when you're drunk to a fault. Now, you might not see things as clearly, um, but like I, I feel like your focus doesn't go away. And I've actually played video games fairly well drunk. When you're high, do you, do you are you able to maintain a high level of hand-eye coordination and all that? I mean, you need to tell me that because I don't know. Oh, God, yeah. Now, there is... You know what it you know what it is when you're high? Like you don't get that like worn out feeling when you're like playing mm. for like super long sessions at a time. Like nowadays if I go back and play guitar here, if I play for like a half hour, I'm like drained. Like <laughs> like my hands are hurt and my brain's just like, "Oh fuck, what the hell? How do I used to do this all the time?" Whereas when you're smoking up the entire time, hours and hours and hours. Like yeah. you used to be able to do the entire set list. Like there's a game mode and an achievement for doing the whole set list in one go. And it would take like Fuck, how long did that take? Like six hours or something in the original rock band? I forget. So So what's worse? Uh next morning weed breath or beer breath? Assuming you ha you didn't throw up. Um ooh, good question. Both are kinda nasty. And also back when I was a real big pothead, I was also a cigarette smoker, so no matter what, I'll smell like shit. <laughs> Cause I'm trying to think, like, I don't know that many negatives about weed. Like what? There's are really not that. Me you know what? You know, like here's here's the thing for me, like they like they say it's not addictive, and it might not be like you know chemically addictive and shit like that. But it's addictive because it's 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 addictive. Yeah, you get into a mindset and a rhythm, and like I was the kind of guy who like when I wasn't when I was a stoner when I wasn't high I was like man I just can't wait to smoke up again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you know, know I wasn't the type where like it would be all I talk about because I knew people like that. Yeah, and I agree with you. They are annoying as fuck. <laughs> I also think though. I think it's the tides are starting to even out a little bit then, because like weed people, like weed is their personality and it's all they talk about and they talk about how much they can smoke and blah de blah blah and all the different mm -hmm. ways they do it, blah de blah blah. Craft beer people are kind of inching into that same category. Oh, for like, no no no, we've I mean we've shit on craft beer people. I'm saying the average drunk, like oh yeah, but like the thing is too, like the average drunk, they're just getting drunk off regular beers or maybe one or two IPAs. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, but yeah, weed people, like I said, they were, I, I said, I always jokingly equate them like vegans. Like, they're you're going to know within 10 minutes of meeting them that they're a weed person. Whereas, oh, like, a craft, fuck, be like. Yeah, craft beer people are annoying, but you usually have to break a few barriers before you find, they're not going to open with that. Whereas weed people, they were, like, so cavalier about it. Yeah, and they also, like, tend to think that, like, what do you call it? Like, I've heard the conversation a few times where, like, oh, man, this is, like, the the forbidden fruit but like you know it's all natural so you know god put this here it's like you know the divine like you know the cure-all it's like man shut the fuck up so you mean, smoke your stupid drug you mean hippies <laughs> kind of not even hippies just st potheads in general i mean here's the deal i i i think how do i want to phrase this not that it's healthier for you I think if you do, if you do, you know, to, if you smoke it, if you're just smoking it straight, like through a joint, like you're still smoking, like you're still that, breathing. I was going to say, that's the bad part of it, where I would say, like, if you just want to get high now, I don't know this either. You would. Wow. Is getting high through an edible significantly different than smoking it? Uh, y y yes, because um, because actually now there's like pretty much like there's a billion different ways to do it now. Sure, but like there's uh straight up THC syringes now where it's not like it's it's concentrated THC and it's like ninety five percent fucking like the, like you need like a grain of rice worth and you can put it on like a cracker, eat that. Oh, and I, when you said syringe, I'm like, don't tell me you inject that shit. I was like, no, 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 no. Like, no, it's, it's a plastic, it's a plastic syringe with like gotcha, an open end. Gotcha. At the end. So, so you yeah. just do a little squirt on the something. Yep, you do a little squirt, and what do you call it? Like, it takes way longer for it to kick in, but once you do, like, it's easy to do too much. But, like, yeah. you can be real fucking, uh, what do you call it, flying on that stuff for a while. So. so here's the thing. Like, you know, 
the just like with drinking though there is a certain like i like i like smoke like when i did it like i like smoking more just because like you get that instant gratification mm-hmm. and if you use like a bubbler or a bong like you're putting less directly into your lungs even though you're still it's more filtered that way so it's a little better for you but but there's like we're a using certain... a vaporizer. Vaporizers are fun, but that's kind of a different high too. It, yeah, it, it all it's kind of weird. It all depends on how you do it too. It can have a different effect. And also, we're talking at a point now. Like I'm sure PA is probably not far off from legalizing it. Um, at where... least Philly. It's weird in PA because Philly it's decriminalized under an ounce, but the rest of PA it isn't. So, but that's why I mean I think it will eventually follow suit. Like I think most of the country oh, yeah. will at some point, and yeah, and it should. In my you opinion. know, in the past, it was it was a you know part of the fun of doing it is because it is illegal, just like drinking underage or some shit. Whereas right. drinking is so acceptable, but the ceremony of smoking, just like a cigar, like I feel like there's something there that you don't get the same ceremony. Whereas you just pop an edible in your mouth, like there's something oh, to yeah, sitting with your buds, like. You're all sharing or whatever, like, just like drinking. And like I said, like cigars, like the, like the ceremony of doing it is part of the fun. So yeah, pass around a joint and shit like that or pass yeah. around the bong. Yeah. Like I said, I'm off. I, I, I don't care. I say do it. Don't hurt yourself. Don't hurt nobody. Um, you probably long term effects. Like Jim said, try not to smoke anything that's going into your lungs if you yeah, can avoid like the- it. Like, like you're not like you said earlier. Like you're not having the extremes. Like families don't get ruined by like abusive weedaholics. Like, yeah. Shit like that. Yeah. Like that's not a thing that you have with weed. The worst thing you get with weed is you just become you can become extremely lazy. That's that's the worst thing. Yeah. I mean, and like you said, you could want to be doing it all day. Where you you know there's <laughs> like like a working out. What's the word? Uh, functioning alcoholic. I'm sure right. there's functioning potheads. Oh yeah. And there's no way that's good for you. Let's put it that way. So, no, but I, like nah. I said, I think it's fine. I think once it becomes fully legal, enjoy it. But just like beer and, and even alcohol, don't over imbibe on anything. Do it to enjoy it, but don't do it to live your life. I yeah, know. and you know what? It's a hell of a lot better of a painkiller than fucking an opioid. So, well, fucking. That, yeah. I would even take alcohol over opioids. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm not suggesting that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, phony. One with there, there's our less PC answer for you. Last yes. week we were being good boys. We were we were being good boys. Yeah, so. we had a yeah. lead. He, he he understood that too, but yeah. No. <laughs> so Jim, but now anyone this ever week, has a problem with our answers, please. We will always elaborate. Yeah. Not a problem. So this week, what do we got from our awesome patrons? Yes, patreoncom slash drink a beer play game. Where for it was two dollars a month. You can ask a question, we'll answer on each and every single one of these Power Hour podcasts. So, first up from Game Whisperer Dean. Ignore this if you've already covered it, as I'm behind on your podcasts, you son of a bitch. Thoughts on NFTs in gaming? So we've kind of talked about this in general. I don't like NFTs. I don't like any crypto. I, I don't want any of that shit involved with gaming. Um... It's it's whoring out what is already a hoard out culture right now with micro purchases and or micro transactions and DLCs. You're just adding more layers of bullshit to it. So I don't like NFTs to begin with. So yeah, I don't want to see them in games. Yeah, like you said, it's another layer of you know micro transaction old bullshit in games and crap like that. I got I gotta say though. NFTs, I'm starting to care about them, like, less. Like, the hatred thing. At first, I was like, oh, I, this is fucking stupid. But now, like, it's I don't been a hate them. I don't hate them. It's em, been a month straight online since I'm the Twitter guy. Yeah. Everyone just, like, constantly, like, oh, fucking stupid NFT. Who? Right click, right click, right click. Like, it's going, it's already happening. It's already coming. Companies are already pushing it. And eventually, like any technology, it's going to get refined enough to where you're not going to have the it's going the environment excuse anymore. So... It's just, it's the way of the future that's going to be coming in there. Like, back in the day, like, QVC would sell you, like, an animation cell with a certificate of authenticity. Now it's just that, but all digital. That's basically what it is. But I see NFTs the same way as I saw Amiibos. It might be hot for a little bit. It'll probably go extinct, because ultimately, everyone is going to recognize the scam that it is. Right? Like, at some point, just like trading cards and pogs, even if it has a little bit of a run... 
like most cryptos, unfortunately for people, like this shit is all a bubble for people trying to make that short term. Like I can become a millionaire. Like no, no, no you, you won't, and you can't. You're the sucker that pays out to the people that can. And unfortunately, if you invest, buy this shit, or get in, try to get in NFTs. Like it's funny. I've seen some smaller tier celebrities trying to do this shit. Like create nfts oh that's a big controversy today is people is uh whoever fucking runs stan lee's twitter account now like marvel's introducing some new hispanic character and he's debuting as an nft in some series i, I mean everyone's outraging about it i'm just like i don't fucking care here's the deal and like, i was like oh you're pissing on his grave it's like mm, fucking who knows maybe he would have liked an nft if he was around you don't know shut up but here's the deal like nfts to me are obsolete in an age where everything is already so copywritten and protect it and this and that so you just added another layer to that to a more specific single image whereas you already know if you decide to try to make merch or sell something with captain america shit marvel could come after you so right. now you're taking a more specific like single it's even sillier it's a more segmented area of copyright for one well, particular it's, thing. It's not even copyright. It's just, what do you call it? You're a code in a database that says this is your thing. Uh, so. that, but that's what I'm saying. Like, people are trying to claim that as, like, it's like a fucking timeshare on a picture. It's well, just no, stupid. No, you know, well, you know what? Like, like, I have heard the argument where it's like, like, look at the Mona Lisa, that kind of deal. Like, anytime someone says with an NFT, you know, like, oh, right click, it's mine now. Well, that's like, that's no different than fucking buying a poster of the mona lisa like yeah you still have the image but it's not the image that kind of deal so like but you're equating classic only... r2 just digital bullshit look right <laughs> one day we could have <laughs> are, the mona are, lisa you, NFTs. are you are you basically trying to say that people should value these bullshitty made in paint characters I... the same way the mona lisa is <laughs> no no do not put that in my mouth I'm, just, I'm asking there. you a question. Right. I have not seen I've not seen a bored ape or a lazy lion yet that I would say is on that same level. <laughs> but who's to say one day some artist doesn't make something that good? I'm saying it. <laughs> Me. I just said it. See, Brian, and if a they are forward thinking than you are. So. If they are making that, then similarly, like, yeah, like anything else, if you create I mean, there's still painters today and digital artists. If you create something you still hold the right as the artist. You hold the original. Now Look, you, you know just, what? Art, let's put let's cut this off right now. Art can be subjective bullshit anyway. Because oh, for sure. Because Andy, Andy Warhol in a stupid fucking soup can, and people pay how much for that goddamn thing? So you know what? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I will take a lazy line over a goddamn soup can. You tell me. <laughs> There's a little at least a little more effort put in there. Fuck. Well, regardless of the fact that you've clearly now invested in NFTs, can we just? Oh no, least... I haven't. I don't have any Ethereum to fucking throw around like that. Can we just at least both admit we don't want to see them in video games or becoming incorporated with video games? Oh, no. No, I don't want to see that shit in there. Yeah. I don't want to see any microtransactions in the games. I don't care how you fucking pay for yeah. it. So. so get rid of that shit. But, yeah, good question. Yep. Next up from Burn Retinas. Gunstar Heroes, Metal Slug, and Contra get a lot of praise for being quality running guns. Critics love Vector Man, but did it arrive too late in the Genesis life to get that same retrospective? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Vector Man is a fun game. But just think about it compared to the names you just said. And, you know, you could, uh, even on the Genesis alone, the amount of shooters that were available. And, like, Vector Man is good. But also, like, the graphically, just like, I'm not saying it's like Balls 3D, but kind of like Balls 3D. Like, at the end of the day, that's not a character you can kind of cling to and be like, he's so cool looking. Because he's not. He really isn't. And even if you appreciate the graphics and how smooth the gameplay is, it just it doesn't grab you because there's nothing to grab on there. And it pales in comparison to those other games. So while you could say it's like maybe an underrated gem, um, I don't think it necessarily deserves more credit. I think it should keep its place as like a B-tier game. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Like, I like Vector Man. Uh, it's definitely a visually impressive game for the system. And, you know, same with 2, but they're okay games. Like, I don't think they're great. I think they're they're good. Yeah. So that's the reason they're not looked as... Like, at this point, we're 30 years out from all this bullshit. Like, if a game is that level of quality, people will talk about it like that. Yeah. So, like, perfect example to Genesis. Like, you have Contra Hardcore, you have Gunstar Heroes, which is by far the best one. Yeah. Um, 
And then you have like you have the earthworm gyms of the world, which are really good, like yeah. and that people still look back at and love. Like fucking people hate the creator of Earthworm Jim, but they still will go back and play the <laughs> fucking game. So like, that's the level of quality that you have there. So yeah, yeah. But Vector Man, good, not great. Exactly. Yeah. No, but good question, G. Yep. And last up, no, that was Burn Retinas, Bry. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Burn Retinas. <laughs> Bry, don't confuse your black eyes. What are you doing? Damn it. <laughs> last up from Phony Montana. Do you ever think you'll get to a point where you're completely done with beer or video games? God, I hope not. I mean, beer would be the one that, in theory, if there was, like, a health reason, I would assume you would drop it. Um, I I don't... There will ease... I mean, there's already come a day where, obviously, Jim and I can't be as into games as we were, just from a time constraint. But yep. I don't ever want to not be... In, like, for me, my pastime of fun is video games. Um... I don't want to trade because if you trade that in, you're trading it in ultimately probably for TV or some other hobby. And yeah, I hope I'm never fully done with either. Like, I hope I can always just enjoy a beer. So, you know, I don't foresee that ever coming to fruition um, unless for some reason I decide to go fully sober. <laughs> but I don't think that's going to be in my future. What about you, Jim? Yeah, um, probably in the same boat i will probably give up beer way before i give up i mean it's always a never say never kind of deal because like i've had shit that i was really hardcore into before that you know uh video games well you know what video games have just always been there though even though like as a kid like i was really huge into toys but then i was also still into video games Mm -hmm. in my teens i was really into being a mall rat and music but i was also still really into video games or, you know, back in college when really into going out, but also still into video games. So, like, video games have kind of always been there and ingrained, so I don't see it going away. Yeah. I'd see beer going away first, because I could just always go back to weed. So, like, you and I have talked, even if there's a situation, and God willing, it never happens, but, like, if you had to sell off 90, even 100% of your collection, you'll probably have some peripheral that you would still play a game on. So, like... I don't see a situation where all of a sudden, like, I'm like, you know what? I'm done with game. Even if I'm, I've recently, like, kind of been completely done with Dead by Daylight. I've been, I was going down a path where I was like, this game's starting to piss me off. It's bullshitty. And even our Call of Duty playing, which was the biggest part of our gaming for how many years? We don't do that as much, but we still play games. So, like, I don't see there ever being a reason why, like, I'd have to cut off gaming altogether. You know what Call of Duty is for me now at this point, basically? Call of Duty is basically replacing a night out at the bar with, a, like, a night of my friends. <laughs> like, I can spend 60 bucks for the midnight release, play it for eight hours, you know. But, or, Jim, you, know, 12... you, could, you can always just play with us and talk. No, no, no. No, I know. I can always just hop on, too, eventually, too. But at the very worst, I'll always have midnight release night. And, yeah. And have it be, like, you know, a nice, a nice day and a half to myself kind of deal. That's worth 60 bucks to me. Fuck it. It's tradition. At this point, At this point yeah. it literally is equivalent to a holiday for us. Exactly. Yeah. So, but yeah, even if it's the worst Call of Duty ever, I can still have that one night and still enjoy myself and shit like that. Yeah. But yeah, so yeah, I mean, in some for- and I've actually thought in my head before, like, God forbid, something catastrophic happens and I need a ton of money quick. I could easily sell off fucking almost everything I have. I'd keep my... Genesis Mini, NES Mini, Super NES Mini, Turbo Graphics Mini, Neo Geo Mini, and like my <laughs> Switch, and I'd be fine with that basically. Like if I was going to be like you know, like a realist about everything. Yeah, that, but, that, it would, but it that's would my hurt. point. It would suck to get rid of, At but I could point, have those things and have yeah. the, scratch the itch and still have my like you know currentish thing. Exactly. So, yeah, beer is one of those where I. Actually, at the beginning of this year is when I think I did that whole, like, I want to just take a month off from drinking altogether just yep. to kind of reset my, my whole diet. And it was for that reason. I didn't, like, particularly miss it. But I also, once I was done, I was like, okay, I, I enjoy, like, drinking when we drink. I know on the weekends, like, it's not like I, I don't I don't get, like, crazy drunk unless I'm going out and doing something. Right. So, yeah, giving up beer, I don't, you know, really see a need for it. Once again, unless, knock on wood, there's ever, like, a health thing. Right. Right, you can live with one liver. It's fine. <laughs> Damn it, Jim. There is only one liver. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but good question, though, bud. 
Yep, and yeah, that wraps up the questions for this week. So, once again, thank you to all of our patrons for the questions. Thank you to, once again, Colin Song for joining in. I always really do appreciate the support. And uh, I guess we'll wait a couple weeks, but we have a plan for the Patreon, a thing that we're adding, adding some more content to it for you guys. So that'll be coming next year. Yep. Yeah, and we'll, it'll be unlocked for everyone at the $2 tier. Oh, I thought we were going to talk about that more. But oh, okay, we'll do never, it at the $2 never, tier. No, wait, I retract. Maybe right. not. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> You can just cut that part. I was going to say the five dollar tier. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Make yeah. it a little more worth it for the five dollar people instead of just one game review and then. No, hey, that's bye true. Bye. All right, hon. <clears throat> Three, two, one. Yeah, so we're really excited to announce that. Like Jim said, we'll probably do it pretty early in January once we it'll, figure it'll, out the details. Yeah, it'll be in January when we start it. But no, no. So thank it, you once it again. It might everyone. rhyme with Conus episode. Yes. Eh? <laughs> yeah, we're so, going to add bonus episodes. Next yes. Week. So thank you, absolute, thank you, everyone, for all the love and support. We truly appreciate it. All right, Chambers, so we're back. How is that harpoon beer treat? You know what? It's pretty goddamn good. I am no expert when it comes to pumpkin coffee because I just drink cold <laughs> brew black all the time. But all right, calm your tits. <laughs> you know, we coffee snobs of the world. But, um, yeah, it's it's a pretty damn... You know what I like about it? It doesn't leave that, like, film on the back of your throat that, like, a lot of pumpkin beers do. Mm. Like, it's very much just one that, like, it, hit, it's, it hits your tongue, the flavor's there, and then it just kind of goes down your throat. Now, if you're the type <laughs> who, like... Like, you know, like most things in my life. So, <laughs> if... So, if you're the type who doesn't like the long, lingering, you know, pumpkin flavor in your beer, then you might like this one. If you do enjoy that, it might not be for you, but I enjoy it. Nice. Yeah, I'm on number three for the Blizzard of Hops. Um, you know what? It's funny. I've, we've mentioned it before. I know my hangovers IPAs are always different, but this has hit me way quicker than other beers. So I'm feeling a good little buzz already after two, which is, it's weird. Like maybe because I haven't had an IPA in a while. But it's weird because I could drink two or three Mad Elves and not even feel this buzzed. So... This one's just hit me weird today. Yeah, funny you speak of, because I just had my second one of these pumpkins, so I got a Mad Elf on standby. <laughs> God damn it, Jim. Switch to bottles. Right. I have my six-pack. That'll be for when Christmas time comes. Son I drink. I drink the trash first. <sighs> All right, Chambers. Speaking of trash, let's talk about these game awards. <laughs> I didn't watch. Well, so we talked about with Jake James Lugo on... What was it two episodes ago three episodes ago and we uh, kind of went over three. the nominees yeah yeah so we talked about it and we were just mentioning like our thoughts on nominees and as we said a lot of it was games we hadn't played didn't even know about um it seemed very kind of pandering almost how the, you think the, an award show yeah. pandering what yeah i as well did not watch i saw highlights after the fact and the only bright spot it's kind of equivalent to like most video game anythings where i like seeing trailers for games but even those were kind of limited there weren't that many great ones um i saw the sonic go, one i was like oh it looks like sonic and breath of the wild cool i mean they didn't show any gameplay footage but that's what I, the vibe i got <laughs> is it something that will interest you Kind of, because you know what? As I've gotten older, I realize that I just, except for, like, pure nostalgia games, I don't really care about Sonic or really like Sonic games that much. Mm. Like, I played Sonic Mania, like, and I was like, eh, this is fine. And, like, I played Generations, which is, like, considered the best 3D Sonic game, and I was like, this mm -hmm. is all right. <laughs> kind of bored. So, I guess I'm just not a Sonic guy at this point. Yeah. I mean, he. it'd be hard for anyone to be a, even our buddy G, who is a huge sonic defender it's tough to defend a lot past the genesis lifetime oh bry you should not question g's powers <laughs> all right we might have to have him on again and put that to the test yeah but speaking of these games i mean so game of the year went to it takes two which i read into a little bit more like i said neither jim and i played it and knew about it apparently it's like a game about parents separating or something and it's like a co-op player brutal i'm like uh, oh okay isn't it one of I those was... like game long like escort not escort missions but like co-op yeah co yes. like you said co-op kind of deals yeah yeah so then um 
Deathloop won a few prizes or a few awards. Forza Horizon 5 won a few. So a lot of it is kind of what you would expect. The uh, the chick that played Lady Dim Dimitrescu won Best Performance, and she was wearing a Hooterific dress. I don't know if you saw that. No, um, I got to look that up. It was interesting. I think she did on purpose. Well, but I bet she fucking did. She all that, I also... I also found it interesting, like, player's choice was Halo Infinite, which, at the time of the Game Awards, what was that game out for, like, a week? Like, it was, it was, it came for out like, November. Maybe two 15th. to three weeks, yeah. Yeah, so, that's interesting. Um, and then... Oh, boobular. Yeah. And then the most anticipated game is Elden Ring, so... I don't know. It, like, nothing from here. Like, it takes Most of the anticipated one. games are stupid-ass. That is a stupid-ass category. Jesus that is, Christ. And, and actually, shout-out to Pam from Cannot Be Tamed. She put it in her video. She had a great video she, rounding it all up, yeah. She mentioned the fact that in 2020, four of the same most anticipated games just went over to 2021 because they weren't released on time. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that's some lazy shit. So... I don't know, Jim. I guess you should be happy. Uh, the best action adventure game was Metroid Dread. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, right. I, I mean, I'm only happy that Dream won best content creator. So, I mean, Dream know. stands finally uh, have our victory. So I, he, he's I've actually said, the only one I heard of out of all of them, and like, I don't. He's a Minecraft YouTuber, whatever. He he cool. got huge. Fine. Whatever. Yo, congrats to him. More power to him. I just. And, yeah, I'm not throwing shit. I don't know who it is, and obviously, good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I'm at the point where I look at these. Like I look at. There's no award ceremony that I actually care about. I, I realize that. Like Oscars, there was a short period in my teens where like I watched the MTV Music Award or Movie Awards. There, there was a while as a kid where I really. Not that I really super cared about it, but, like, I'd get hyped for a band I like winning, like, a VMA or something like yes. that. Yes. Yeah. I don't the, give two shits fucking, about it. There was a time when I fucking, like, it felt like a goddamn victory when Corin was, like, number one on TRL beating Backstreet Boys. <laughs> I was like, yes, we did it! <laughs> Damn it, Jim. Hey. It's a lonely kid. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it, this is, um, you know, just anyone out there, don't don't concern yourself and worry too much about these. They don't truly mean anything. Just like you could argue with the Oscars. I mean, I bet I could bring up the list of the past 20 Oscar winners, Jim. And the chances are you probably haven't seen more than three of them. Oh, I know for a fact I haven't seen most of the Oscar uh, Best Movie nominees for the past yeah. few years. And, you know, these Game Awards, as we said, unfortunately now, they are more just pandering to get the most brownie points in society. So oh, yeah. take take that as you will. If people were happy with it, awesome. Um, but it's funny because It Takes Two seem to be the big winner of the night, but they're also in a little bit of a lawsuit, according to an article that you actually linked for this episode. Oh, yeah. Um, so... Jumping right into that. Good transition. You like that there, transition? Right? You see what I did there? Transition there. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, It Takes Two was hit by Take Two Interactive. Uh, so, yeah, the game that just won Game of the Year uh, hit by a trademark claim from the Grand Theft Auto Parent Company. And about divorcing parents struck by a trademark claim before its release earlier this year, it has emerged. So, record show developer Hazelite has uh, subsequently abandoned ownership of the name. So here's the deal. <clears throat> it takes two. I'm actually shocked that's the first time a game with that title came up. Yeah. Like it's it's a it's a really old saying. Like it takes two. So Maybe it's too know, obvious. Damn it. Huh? <laughs> it takes two obvious? Damn it. Hate myself. And Take Two Interactive is kind of doing the shitty thing. Where I would almost say like Stone Brewing was doing. No, it's copyright right. trolling. It's all they're fucking doing. That, yeah. Stupid. Which is, I don't know. Maybe I can't appreciate being a corporation that makes however much Take Two makes because if they're a parent company of Grand Theft Auto, they must be making hand over foot. But oh, you know, well, Brian, they also have copyright claims in the patent office over the words Rockstar because they own Rockstar Games. 
uh, Social Club, Mafia, <laughs> Civilization, and more. Holy fucking shit. How do you copyright... I, I, that makes no sense. Like, like who who were those assholes that tried to copyright uh, Let's React or React Channel? Oh, the when the Fine Brothers tried to do that back in like yeah. 2016. Yeah. And and you know they were a very small fish in the grand scheme of things trying to do this. It worries me when a big company like okay, Nintendo trying to if they were to trademark like Metroid or. Legend of Zelda or Super Mario Brothers, like I mean, they had those it, copyrights. I, I, I'm I'm trying to th- like I can't think of a specific enough, but like PAL. maybe maybe if they tried to copyright like well maybe they already have it like saying cart but with a K, something yeah something to that effect um, would make more sense to just copyright a word like fucking mafia and civilization and now takes two. I don't know, man. Like, I don't know what judge would take that shit seriously. I don't know how you enforce it, but... Wow. Yeah. (laughs) In the article, they say that there is a Florida-based axe-throwing company called Rockstar Axe Throwing, which is trying to oppose Take-Two's trademark grab. Jesus Christ. Like, like they're going after fucking everything. Like, come on, man. Like, you own Grand Theft Auto. You have more money than God. Like, you don't need to go after these fucking little guys. Like... Like but, yeah, just be, it's the thing we said before. We're just because you can doesn't mean you should. Like you motherfuckers. Like here's the deal: Should James Cameron go after Take Two because with their thing it says T Two? Oh, Ooh. I, I'm just saying. Like you know, you want to be shitty about that, then go down that road with everybody. It, uh. it, like I can fully appreciate if it takes two somehow tried to steal the logo. And really try to... Like, like Stone's argument, as stupid as it was with Keystone, I could almost see, like, okay, yes, having Stone written on the side of your can that way, a little weird, whatever, we've been over that enough. But, like, have a legit case where it's like, okay, maybe you are trying to cause market confusion, and it's not like Take-Two themselves put out these games. They're just a name attached, attached on top of another name. So, I don't know. I You know me. I hate all this shit. When there's actual cause for real people stealing other people's shit, I'm all for it. This grasping at straws because your lawyers are bored and tr- tired of playing with their dicks, I don't like it. Yeah, no? I mean, it's just, like, copyright trolling is, I mean, it's just fucking annoying. And, Brian, if I could quote uh, Qui-Gon Jinn, there's always a bigger <laughs> fish, so... Watch what you do, because someone could do it right back to you. This is, you know, like it's wrong and everything. The golden rule. Bible. Don't Look it up. You dare quote Qui Gon Jinn to me? You Why son not? Of a bitch. Best Jedi. What do you want? <laughs> you you hate him. <laughs> what? What do you mean I hate him? I love Qui Gon. Liam Neeson's. <laughs> yeah, but all you want to do is talk shit on that movie. You know, has the best. Even though it has the best Duel single Fates, song. Yeah. Duel of Fates is the best song in the entire goddamn franchise. Yeah. It's got the best lightsaber battle in the whole fucking franchise. It's yep. got, you know, it's got problems. It's got the Jew stereotypes. It's got the annoying <laughs> kid. It's got, it's got problems. It's got, it's got the black stereotype with the fucking alien, the Jar Jar, and the thing. Yeah, you know. Wait, wait, Jar Jar's supposed to be black? Well, that there's apparently the thing that like people are saying that he's like, a, almost like, was it like minstrel-ish or something like that? Re- wow. Okay, that one went over. I just took him as like the complete obvious like idiot character. Oh, you know what? I think it was almost like like the old, uh, like the like not like slave, but what am I like the like the I know servant you, kind no, of thing. Um, no, like, no, minstrel is called oh, fuck. What is it called? Kind of a uh, not black facey, but it was just like no. Oh, I oh, I know oh, what Mises you mean. So, me and Mises so wackies, like stuff like yes. that. Yes, like I don't know how to describe it. Kind of like foghorn leghorn. Mm, is isn't that nah, the one? that's different? That's or different no, no. Foghorn. But I I know I kind of know what you're saying, but. Wow. Okay. I did, I knew about the thing with uh, shit. What was Watto. Anakin's Watto? Yeah, but <laughs> that's so funny. It's funny because old sneaky George at it again. No, but you know what's funny is like, like everything, there is no such thing as an original thought, right? So we all accept that everything is that's put out there is really just influenced by something, and when you create a universe and you're just trying to fill in characters. Like, you will just make a terrible character, 
and you he might not have had anything in his mind but like people will make those connections for you no oh, will they ever <laughs> people will pick up on things yeah so i don't know you guys let us know what do you think of this takes two thing first let us know did you play it takes two did you like it and what do you think of this bullshit lawsuit jim and i you know as we've said this is just goddamn silly yeah exactly so stupid copyright trolling it's like ip trolling it's like any kind of that shit like fuck yeah all right chambers but moving on talking about silly shit and people getting mad over stuff the reoccurring bit for you gamers mad and what are people pissed off about now jim well bry it's december 14th we're hitting up the christmas season here i'm in a christmas shirt right now so and actually bry you're in a very handsome looking drink and beer play game shirt i have to say you probably show uh, it off. it's uh the latest available i i went with the gray color because i thought it would complement the the nes controller although we're not calling it nes for copyright reasons it's just a controller <laughs> yes, it is the classic 8-bit style controller. That is ah. what it is called. Ha 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 ha. Ha ha ha. But tis the season. I changed the description on the website, you stupid fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but it is the season, and, you know, let's just say there are plenty of companies. I even covered it in a video last year about company or uh christmas levels or christmas themes being put into video games to get festive jim and i we're big fans of that when you have halloween levels christmas levels whatever yep. it always makes it a little more fun and <clears throat> battlefield 2042 they decided to add in a santa skin now of course it's not called santa in the game it's called father christmas but it's essentially and the picture will be below it's a guy in a santa robe with a big white beard and there's also updates for guns that Is have there? like I don't, I don't really see it <laughs> i mean it could be like goldberg from santa slays oh i see that okay. <laughs> and there's also skins for guns that have little lights or decorations so getting in the holly jolly mood of a thing that jim and i have talked about which is we don't love microtransactions or dlcs now i believe like most games nowadays you could just unlock it through playing i'm not sure about those specifics but people aren't even mad about that they're just mad because they're kind of trying to dumb down battlefield and take what is the i guess right now the most realistic fps game out there and in, in a lot of players' words, try to make it like Fortnite or Call of Duty Warzone with all their goofy-ass skins. Actually, Am I saying that made, right, Jim? They're mad for two reasons, and that's one of them. So, okay. And actually, this is one of those gamers' mads where I'm like, man, it's, it's two sides. Of the, two sides, kind of seeing both. So, the one side, which I think is stupid, is the people bitching like, oh, you're just dumbing down Battlefield, blah, 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 blah. Like, one, this is set in 2042. And two, like, Battlefield's, it's not what it was, like, back in the heyday of Battlefield vs. Call of Duty when, like, people, when there was, like, the real alternative to COD and, like, the realistic, you know, boots on the ground kind of game. Mm -hmm. Like, it's been, it's been on a bit of a downturn in the public eye for a while. But the big problem that a lot of people are having with it is the release for Battlefield 2042 has been a disaster. It has been a buggy fucking mess. The matchmaking has been horrific. Features haven't worked. Online matchmaking is shit. Ranking up systems just don't work half the time. All that kind of bull crap. So people are fl also flipping a bitch because they're going, really? You're adding all this bullshit content instead of <laughs> fixing the fucking game? Like, the user base has already dropped off a cliff on Steam and shit like that. Like, mm -hmm. Twitch, people aren't watching it. Like, this game is falling off a cliff fucking fast. And for any of these fucking shooters at this point, like, Besides the initial sales, they need their goddamn microtransactions to keep the money flowing in and shit like that. So, this game's looking like it's going to be dying a quick death. And if they don't do something quick, ooh mama. So, you have the diehard contingent. And here's what I will say. Battlefield games are ridiculously fun. Like, they... As, as, the guy, as a guy who's been COD fanboy since, whatever, four or three. Like... Battlefield is a breath of fresh air. It is such a, it is a truly a different game. Other than the fact that it's an FPS, it doesn't feel anything like Call of Duty. Never has, never will. Um, Maybe. 
<laughs> but here's the deal. Like, okay, I don't like the fact that it has its problems, but I think people need to appreciate that there is a disconnect between those issues and the fact that they already have skins lined up for the next X amount of years, probably. Like, it's not like they had those problems and they said, well, we're not going to deal with those. We're going to work on these skins. Like, you got to realize they knew they were releasing these skins before they even released the game. Like, they're, it's a cash grab, just like I'm sure they have something for New Year's, for Val... Like, they're going to have it for every major season because now games live and die by, as Jim said, microtransactions, which are all usually bet on the idea of you're playing a Warzone or, you know, um, Battle Royale-style game, and you go through seasons where you unlock exclusive content. And... Yes, in almost every game I've played that has those, you can just play your ass off and unlock everything, or you pay a little bit of money and get all the unlocks you want. So, I get being mad that the game doesn't function, but I'm just saying, realize, it's not like they put aside those issues to create it. That That's my only devil's advocate here. And... Guys, don't take shit so fucking serious. I know you're a real shooter. You think this is watering it down. Grow the fuck up. Like, that's where I get mad. I'm like, come on, man. Like, it's not going to bother you. I think people just don't want to get killed and then teabagged by Santa. Maybe you don't. <laughs> Damn it, Jim. That well, wasn't go back. Santa doing it to you. <laughs> he says he isn't. But what do you call it? So to get back to your point, they actually had to release a statement because of the outrage over this. Mm -hmm. And basically they said, development for the live service requires us to work months in advance and enables us to have options when we reach key moments in our first year. Today we have other priorities and so, and also apparently like these were kind of like accidentally leaked. So like they weren't mm. supposed to be showing these skins, but like they, someone fucked up. So, and people saw it and they're like, oh, what the fuck is this? <laughs> so, and they're saying we presently have no plans to utilize all of them this holiday. We... Also create unique cosmetics for single-time use in special Battlefield portal modes to further enhance the fantasy and special events. Throughout our live service, you may occasionally encounter these mode locks cosmetics, which don't impact the rest of the game. It provides all of us working on Battlefield with exciting new opportunities that let us explore more creative freedom than before. Having you all along the journey is something we don't take for granted, and we'll be grateful to hear your experience with these modes. Separately, we'll be starting our own weekly missions, blah, 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 blah. So all the usual, like, jargon. And yeah, we didn't get the you know the exact response that they were hoping for. So yeah. you know the, the the poor social media intern had to take their beating. The rite of passage, I think, for a lot of these companies at this point. Somebody, yeah, somebody ate shit down the line. Yeah, but of course, it's still better with the people going. These skins should not be a part of Battlefield. Make the games fun and not their appearance. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. You're playing a goddamn video game. You're not. You, you you are 300 pounds and you haven't wiped your butt in two days. You do not get to say that this is not realistic on the goddamn war front. All right? Fuck. Jim, that sounds oddly specific. Two days. <laughs> Look, Bri. <laughs> I'm just saying it sounded very specific. That's all I said. <laughs> Look, sometimes, sometimes you just, you know, you shoot your shot and you fucking score the goal. All right? Sometimes you're just right. What's that have to do with wiping your butt for two days? <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> so yeah you guys let us know especially we do have some buddies jay and and some people who are big battlefield fans i'm curious of people who love the series are you still experiencing because this article is from december 2nd and as jim yeah. said we're recording on the 14th has the game improved significantly has it overcome all these bugs like you let us know what you think and does do skins like this bother you like we know how people get passionate about games, and, and when they, whenever they feel the game is being dumbed down for people or whatever, it always becomes a big issue. Oh, yeah. And uh, also, just real quick uh, side note on that. So, it, like, that became big news, but the first, like, good old Max Marvel, he brought to our attention first. Mm -hmm. And so, like, when he tweeted it to me about it, like, I guess he, like, quote tweeted or just replied to the thing. So I just wrote, oh, it looks like the game is made again. And then, like, it wasn't, like, a lot because, you know, buried in a sea of a billion fucking comments. But a couple people were like, oh, well, we have every right to be mad, blah, 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 blah. And I was just like, dude, I haven't looked into this yet. I was just fucking, <laughs> like, I got to look it over. And they're like, well, maybe you should because you goddamn buy paid, you know, people who pay for a game should expect a thing. It's like, <laughs> okay. Jim, stop stirring the pot. <laughs> Brian, need the interaction. That's how you fucking abuse the other 
damn it. <laughs> should do it more. Shit. I think you, you, being a troll works, Jim. That's all I'm going to say. And how. <laughs> all right, Chambers. So for our last topic for today, um, I have a which is better. And this actually came up from a bunch of games I've been playing. Um, and I can use examples like I, most 8-bit games fall into one of these categories versus other games. But um, what do you like better? Do you like when you're playing a game and a character runs over an object and picks it up automatically? Or that you need to use a button to pick up an object? And I'll tell you, so <clears throat> I was in a situation, I was playing that uh, uh, C Bloodstained Curse of the Moon, and I yep. kept changing my goddamn powers by accident because it was yep. automatic pickup from hitting candles and my goddamn powers would shift. Yep. And then conversely, I was playing um fuck, I can't remember the game, but it was a game where it was annoying because I would go near an object, I thought I would get it and I would like hit the button almost too quick and then I'd run away and be like, "Fuck, I need to go back and pick it up." So it's almost like I had to spend the time to sit there and pick it up. Um, I, I'm not coming in this with a strong opinion either way. I threw it up here for you and I just to really hash out and discuss which do you prefer and which is better? Ah, well, <laughs> obviously the perfect world is I, I, outside the two choices. And I'm going to say blanket statement that this is outside the two choices because it makes it too easy. But like. The Castlevanias like Rondo and fucking Dracula X and shit like that where you can pick up an item, but the old item is still there for a couple seconds, so you can go back and pick that up. Sure. And then you can kind of choose between which one you want to go with. Because God forbid that's you lose ideal, the fucking... That's ideal, yes. Yeah, that's ideal. So that's, out of the, that's not part of the question here. I'm going to go with automatically picking it up. Because one, as we know, kind of a lazy guy. <laughs> so, if I run over something and I'm in the heat of like action and platforming and battling and shit like that, I don't want to have to think an extra step of oh shit, I got to pick this up now. Oh shit, I'm going to take a stupid cheap hit just because I'm trying to go get this and stuff like that. The annoying side to that is going to be that, like you just said, sometimes you're going to be forced picking up shit you don't want. <laughs> you could have the perfect weapon, like you know. You're not going to have the fucking boomerang cross anymore in Castlevania. Like, you, all of a sudden, you're stuck with the fucking some, some shit. The so, axe. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, the axe is all right. There's, like, three it, situations where you're like, oh, this is kind of useful. And even, like, the holy water, except for Castlevania 2, where you spam bosses. But, like, there's so the many axe is, just... The axe is useful against the bats. That's it. Exactly. They're useful against the bat, the yeah. bat bosses. Yeah. So, yeah. So, like... You know what? I will say that for though, like, it kind of adds to the randomness and the difficulty and kind of the fun. Like, it's frustrating as fuck to be stuck with a weapon that you didn't want. Same thing can be applied to, like, the, you know, the ghouls and ghost series and shit like that. When you pick up a weapon, you, you have the knife and then you fucking accidentally pick up the flame. And you're like, God damn it, not the fucking flame. <laughs> but, you know, no, I guess I fucked up. Gotta deal with this now. So it adds, you know, it adds a little spice to life. It kind of forces you into it. Whereas, you know... When you have to pick up a weapon, you have to slow it down in order to get over it and be in the right spot. Sometimes in the heat of battle, you're not going to be over the right fucking pixel and just frustrating yourself more and more. And, you know, it's just that it seems seems unnecessary to me. Seems like hmm. an unnecessary little step. So, interesting. I, now, it depends on the genre. Like, I think, like, a, say, a beat em up, you kind of have to have a thing where you have to pick it up just because of, like, the simple control, the nature of the control scheme. So, it depends on the genre of game, too, but. Sure. Uh, I'll say just blanket statement. I'll say I enjoy just automatically picking up more. Yeah, and like Jim said, I think the easy and the solution is games where there should be items, in my opinion, that you always pick up. Anything that's like a points or if you need health, like things that can, should be automatic. But thinking of like a GTA Five, where all like any money you run over is automatic. Um, but weapons, if you don't already have that weapon, it's automatic, or you have the option to swap it out. So yes, that is the most ideal, and even in old 2D games, I love that when, when the old item is there, and you can decide, but fuck, man, 
<clears throat> to play devil's advocate to Jim's answer, the strategy and, like, I need to pick this up now usually dictates, like, you're in more control of how the game goes versus you accidentally unlock the weapon that you didn't realize and then even in all of your examples jim what usually ends up happening is to avoid that when once you do get a good weapon you're going to take more time to like stay back hit a candle see what it is and if it's something you don't yep. want you're you might you might even wait for it to disappear you might be like i'm stopping because i don't want to fucking lose this um fair point so it's like I was going to say the flow of the game is better when it's automatic pickups, but once you learn those little tricks, like in Ghosts and Goblins, yeah, once I get the knife, all of a sudden, like, I'm standing back a lot more. I'm not just running forward, or I'm purposely avoiding the characters or, or items that would drop it. So I'll go with picking up just because it does require more strategy and you're in more control of your fate. Like, so if you pick up a weapon and you die, it truly is on you. Whereas with the automatic, yeah, that randomness is fun, but it can kind of be bullshitty. Like you said, you pick up something you don't want, you're like, motherfuck, now I have a weapon that sucks. So yeah, I'll go with always, the more control to the character, the better. Right, would you say there's no fate but what you make? Sarah Connor, T2. Jim, now Take Two's going to come after us. <laughs> Fuck, bring it on, I need the publicity. Jim, we're going to do a shirt, drink a beer and T2. <laughs> Drink a beer and we got sued. Fuck. <laughs> so yeah, this this was one of those random ones that came up, but like as a game mechanic, that that really pisses me off that they can't all just be perfect and do the old item is there. Pick it up automatically, old item's there. If you fucked up, pick it up. Yeah. I find it bullshitty that in most of those games that there's a fucking time limit anyway. That was one issue I had with, with I've always had with games, like when you do hit a candle from afar, like say you use a power or something, and you can't get over there, and it disappears, you're like, God damn it. Yep, that is a pain. I don't even know why. It, right, are you just burnt on time limits after all these alien games we've done? <sighs> don't even get me started. T time limits are the bane of my existence. I, f oh, I hate them. I hate them. I don't like them, Jim. There's no point. We're not playing in an arcade. You don't need my quarters. Let me enjoy my goddamn game. I was born in the time. Right? In time. <laughs> so, you guys, what do you think? Is it better to just pick up items or when you have the option to select it? What's your favorite? Which is better? You let us know in the comments below. Jambers, now that you went through two of those beers, did you start in on that Mad Elf? Oh, yeah. I'm just about done that Mad Elf. <laughs> We know we know that you're enjoying it, but I can't wait till you get to the high tier glass bottles. Oh yeah, I mean that's going to be they're, they're probably the um, either the last one of the year because damn you wait so late. Just do it. What? Do it. Do it. Are you taking off any days before Christmas? Just like one more <laughs> this week, but that's it. That's I'm out of time for the year. So I want I want to see you drinking out of Mad Elf bottles much earlier. Than Christmas. Oh no! Like probably by probably by next episode, I'll be doing that. Yeah, that's what I like to hear, Jim. <laughs> Look, Bry. What? <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> you got nothing. <laughs> got nothing. Ain't got shit. Now suck my cock. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, gotta suck something. <laughs> so you're, uh, you're not serious, are you? <laughs> I've never been more serious about anything in my life. Top Gun actor. <laughs> Blizzard of Hops, if you haven't tried it, it's good. But as I said at the beginning, it's not going to blow you away. It is really light. Uh, the flavor is a little too on the piney side for me. Mm. I, I think I've gotten too accustomed to hazy IPAs with like a little bit more fruit, a little more drinkable. This is a, a little bit on the bitter side. But like I said, it's my third one. It's still good, so I'm not shitting on it, but yeah. Which is kind of funny because we've had a lot of episodes with hazy IPAs, and you're like, eh, most hazy IPAs are eh, kind of overrated. I don't see the, I don't see the big oh, deal. And now you're like, oh, I kind of miss it if hazy IPA. They, hazy IPAs are overrated, and they're overused, but I prefer them any day over a regular IPA. Which yeah. I've said regular IPAs are the most, the most overrated of beers. Well, 
Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so with that, everyone, thank you so much. If you're still watching on YouTube and you haven't already, make sure to hit that like, hit that subscribe button, and the notification bell so you can see when all of our videos come out. Um, if you're supporting us on Patreon, we truly appreciate it once again. And make sure you get those questions in. And, and if you're listening on Spotify, on iTunes, and you haven't already subscribed, please do that. That helps us tremendously. And leaving us a five-star comment we will always respond to it. So please make sure do that if you want to support us. Yep. And if you have any rebuttals to anything that we're saying here, don't tweet us. Don't Facebook us. Go over to YouTube. Hit the link. Drop a comment in there. Help our algorithm out. And we, will re <laughs> we respond to everyone who fucking comments to us. So Absolutely. So with that, everyone, we want to say have a good night and cheers. Cheers, guys.